what if we are able to provide tens of liters of clean drinking water from nothing but humidity in the air? In this video, we are going to explain how desiccant atmospheric water harvesters work and how they can enrich the lives of over 2 billion people around the world. We will look at the amazing materials that can absorb water several times their own weight and finally observe the difference between commercial and research-based products. In recent times, research has increased several folds on atmospheric water harvesters or AWH for short. Although cooling condensation-based AWH are available in the market, there is a strong need to have more efficient, low-cost machines as freshwater scarcity grows around the world. One area that is in focus is the desiccant or sorbent-based AWH. Compared to cooling condensation-based AWH, they have the ability to produce water almost free of cost as they can use passive energy sources such as solar energy. Furthermore, unlike the cooling condensation AWH, the sorbent-based AWH can be used in areas where atmospheric humidity levels are lower. This makes the sorbent-based atmospheric water harvesters ideal for arid and semi-arid conditions where the sunshine is plenty, humidity is relatively low, and water scarcity is high. There are various hygroscopic and desiccant materials being explored that can extract water vapors present inside the air. These materials include carbon-based sorbents, deliquescent salts, metal organic framework, zeolite, hydrogel, and liquid desiccants. Most of these materials are easily available. However, the use of each requires a different framework to account for their different properties. The absorption or water uptake capability of these materials is represented by the maximum mass of water retention by the material compared to its own weight and is usually expressed in grams per gram. Silica gel can hold 0.3 times water to its own weight. That means a kilogram of silica gel will absorb around 300 grams of water until it can hold no more. Zeolite holds between 0.3 to 4 times its own weight depending upon the condition, that is temperature and relative humidity. Metal organic framework, a synthetic compound, can absorb water up to 0.4 times its own weight under optimal conditions of high humidity and proper design. Hydrogels can absorb 10 to 100 times their own weight. However, they are normally used in conjunction with the liquescent salts such as lithium chloride as their ability to extract water vapor directly from air is low and also they work better in environments of high humidity. They can hold a large amount of water inside them though. Getting water absorbed into the sorbent or hydrophilic material by passing air over it is just one part of a two-step process. Once the material gets reasonably saturated, the next step is to remove this trapped water. This step requires energy and in most cases, heat. And this is where solar energy comes into play. It heats the sorbent material which helps to release the water trapped inside it. The greater the propensity of sorbent material for capturing water vapor from air, the more energy is required to get the trapped water out of it. And it is for this reason that sorbent has to be selected based on atmospheric conditions, that is humidity and available solar energy. In conditions of high humidity and low solar irradiation, sorbents with lower water retention capability would perform better. In arid climates where humidity is low and solar energy is high, Sorbents with higher hydrophilic nature and water retention capability would be more feasible. Let's now look at some numbers for desorption or removal of water from a sorbent material. Silica gel is very effective in trapping moisture, but it tends to release it at 100 to 120 degrees centigrade. Hydrogels can start to release loosely bound water from 30 degrees centigrade but requires 150 degrees centigrade to remove strongly bound water. In this regard, metal organic framework, and in particular MOF801, has been identified as the most feasible material for atmospheric water harvesting. Metal organic framework, 
simply described is a combination of metal ion and organic compounds coming together to form a porous material. Not only can the metal organic framework operate efficiently at low relative humidity levels of 20%, but it can release the water from 50 degrees to 80 degrees centigrade, which can be easily achieved by solar thermal devices. To compare the output of different atmospheric water harvesters that utilize solar energy, a term called water mass flux is often used. This is simply how many liters of water per day per square meter area is harvested. At present, the fluxes received for passive solar AWH range from 0.77 to 2.89 liters of water per day. This is low compared to cooling condensation device that can produce almost 20 liters a day and has a footprint of a simple water dispenser. And this is because most sorbent-based atmospheric water harvesting devices are designed for absorbing water vapor during the night alone when relative humidity is higher. They release or in other words, desorb water during the day when solar energy is available, thus carrying out a single cycle of capture and release of water during the whole day. These devices work passively and have limited productivity. Other devices have been made that carry out several cycles during the day and produce much more water, but these systems are active and require energy throughout the day. It's anticipated that hybrid devices that make use of both active and passive energy will have the highest yield. These devices should make use of radiative cooling during night and solar energy during day to complement their active cooling and heating systems. Recently, a study was carried out in which it was suggested that for wide-scale adoption, the yield of the atmospheric water harvester has to be almost double the current value. So at 50% relative humidity, the AWH should be able to extract 4.4 liters of water per day at 80% humidity, it should be able to extract more than 9 liters per square meter per day. At present, some of the commercial products are achieving close to these values, but they are too energy intensive and gobble up 1 kilowatt hour of electricity for every 3 liters of water produced. But there is room for optimism, as shown by research by Korea Institute of Science and Technology. They studied the thermodynamic limits for adsorption-based atmospheric water harvesters. It was revealed that around many places across the globe, there is potential to harvest more than 100 liters per square meter per day. If we can achieve even a fifth of that, the world's freshwater crisis would be solved. The science of atmospheric water harvesting is still evolving but its potential to solve global water challenges is immense. Together, we can build a future where clean water is available to all. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.